Okay, uh, I think now we can start. Sorry for the inconvenience of, yeah, I mean, the, the issues that we have with we had with the sound here. So, uh, but thank you very much for being here. It's a pleasure to present this panel with such great speakers. Um, we're going to talk up here about the challenges of data governance that we have. The title is In a Multilateral World, and our focus will be mostly on the discussions that are happening both on the G7 and on the G20 uh, in this regard. And I think that's especially considering that um, the Brazilian government's preparing itself for the G20, to host the G20 in the next year. Uh, I think it is a great opportunity for us to discuss these digital topics, how, uh, whether data governance is a priority for the for the next discussions, uh, or if, if, if we or we if we have other other issues that are more on the priority of what's going on, so I think it will be a, a really fruitful, very fruitful debate, and I'm looking forward to to the discussions. And of course, uh, we would really appreciate if you guys brought questions so that we can have a, the most um, interesting discussion possible. Uh, so this is a panel that. Um, I am, my name is Jose Renato, I'm from the Laboratory of Public Policy and Internet, LAPIN, a think tank based in Brasilia, the, the capital of Brazil, and I work on, on, on issues related to digital policy, so AI governance, data governance, uh, and um, platform regulation as well. And I am also a member of the Federal Administration Central Committee of Data Governance. And this panel was, um, made in partnership uh, with our great friends from the Brazilian National Data Protection Authority. Uh, and I speak mostly in the person of also Thiago Moraes, who worked really hard to make this panel happen. And it's unfortunate that we don't have uh, him and his, his colleagues here to stay with us um, in person. But um, I would like just to uh, present a video of uh, a dear colleague and a leader in the debates regarding data protection, data governance as a whole, Director Miriam Vimeh, who is a director of the ANPD, the National Data Protection Authority. And then we're gonna discuss how will be the format of this panel, uh, how it will work, and also present our extremely talented speakers. So let's see if it will work now. Can we have the sound, please? Just one more second now. Well, okay, while we fix this issue again, uh, I'm gonna start presenting, talking a little bit about the, the, the idea of this panel. Well, as, our as I mentioned, uh, the idea is that we discuss how data governance is being dealt with in these two fora, G7 and G20, understand how each of them impacts the other, and understand what are the challenges that, that we have to propose this agenda on a more international level, considering the, how, we ha how important is the is the flow, the protection, the, and of the governance as a whole of data, not just personal, but also non-person, uh, to advance uh, policies in our countries. So we are gonna have a first round of presentations. It will be three minutes each. I'll have, unfortunately, to be quite strict to the time because we have already such a delay. And, um, and then afterwards, we're gonna open to questions. So please uh, pay attention to, the, to what the people here are saying so that uh, you bring the best considerations that you can have. So on my, on my left side, we have Mr. Yoshi Ida, a director at the Ministry of, sorry, I don't have my computer, Ministry of In Information and Communication. Internal Affairs and Communication. Thank you very much, Mr. Ida. Um, by his side, we have Alexandre Costa Barbosa. 
He is a representative of the movement of homeless workers in Brazil. Um, on my right side, we have uh, Mr. Luciano Matza. He is a director at the Ministry of International Affairs in Brazil, of Foreign Affairs in Brazil, Itamaraty. And we also have uh, online with us uh, Gaurav Sharma, who is an AI expert at the GIZ, the German Inter uh, Cooperation Agency based in India. And we also have Veronica Arroyo, uh, a researcher at the Citizen Lab, currently based in Canada, but she's a Peruvian, so another representative from Latin America. And uh, okay, okay, let's try again. And so let's have medium Vimeo reverse. Hopefully, hopefully it will work out. Oh, unfortunately not. <laughs> okay, so let's move on with our panel. I'm sure media not only will understand, but we will try again afterwards, and then we pretend that it was in the beginning. So, <laughs> so yes, uh, well, um, we're gonna start now the discussion, um, also because he's representing our host country here at the IGF, Mr. Ida, who has been very active in the discussions on data governance within both fora that we're gonna discuss here, both the G7 and the G20. And um, Mr. Ida, maybe to, for us to start the conversation, I would like to hear from you what, are, what have been the main objectives and principles that um, the G7 and the G20, from the perspective of the Japanese government, have worked on data governance issues. So if you could talk a little bit about this theme and how do they, you see that the, the agendas of both fora complement and also differentiate for, from each other, it would be amazing to hear from you in this topic. Yes. Okay, thank you very much uh, for for introduction and uh, thank you very much for invitation. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Yoichi Ida, as introduced, uh, uh, and uh, I'm working uh, as uh, at this moment uh, vice uh, assistant vice uh, uh, minister at the ministry, uh, uh, covering uh, multilateral uh, policy uh, uh, fora in digital uh, uh, field. And uh, uh, the, uh, as the moderator pointed out, uh, we have been uh, trying to be very active, uh, in particular in the uh, fora such as uh, uh, G7 and G20, uh, 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 to promote uh, uh, in, uh, the uh, into, uh, inclusive and uh, uh, multi-stakeholder approach uh, in internet governance, uh, but when we talk about internet governance, uh, we have many, many uh, uh, different uh, items uh, to cover and also a very wide uh, uh, ranging uh, perspectives from uh, uh, different uh, communities. So uh, when we took uh, the uh, previous G7 presidency in the year 2016, uh, we uh, particularly focused on the topic uh, on free flow of information across borders, uh, which uh, we believed uh, uh, as one of the most important element uh, in promoting uh, uh, internet governance. And also we proposed uh, uh, to, to, uh, to start uh, international discussion on AI governance uh, in the year of 2016, and both of the uh, agenda items were succeeded uh, in uh, G7 framework and also some uh, uh, in G20 framework. And uh, uh, we continuously discussed the free flow of information uh, across borders uh, with G7 colleagues. And uh, uh, in the year of 2019, uh, we proposed uh, uh, the concept of data free flow with the trust when we took the uh, G20 presidency. Uh, at that moment, uh, we also focused on the uh, 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 discussion uh, on uh, AI governance uh, and uh, uh, both uh, agenda items we uh, used the terminology human centricity instead of democracy uh, because uh, we have uh, many wider range of uh, uh, partners in the framework of G20. When we discuss those uh, issues uh, in G7, we uh, always focus on the common shared value uh, uh, on, uh, based on democratic uh, 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 principles, but uh, uh, when we uh, discuss with the colleagues uh, with the G20 uh, uh, partners, 
uh, we uh, uh, use uh, terminology of uh, human centricity. Anyway, uh, we uh, believe uh, uh, data flow and uh, AI uh, are most important element uh, in promoting uh, open and uh, free uh, uh, internet-based uh, society and the economy. And uh, uh, we also uh, pick up uh, internet governance uh, as a whole as one of the most important agenda items when we took uh, the uh, G7 presidency this year. So uh, well, uh, as a, uh, in, in the whole agenda items in digital and tech uh, ministers' uh, 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 discussion, uh, we covered uh, data free flow with the trust uh, to, to promote uh, uh, the uh, data flow across borders uh, 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 as free as possible. But uh, of course, at the same time, we uh, enhance trust uh, uh, among uh, uh, stakeholders. And uh, we discussed how we could do that. Uh, 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 in particular, uh, uh, how we could uh, uh, promote uh, uh, data flow. Uh, uh, with uh, personal data uh, across borders uh, while protecting privacy and uh, uh, human, uh, uh, human rights. And uh, when we discussed uh, AI uh, principles, uh, we uh, discussed how to, to promote uh, 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 interoperability between different frameworks. This applies uh, to the data flow discussion too. Uh, we always uh, recognize uh, uh, the uh, different countries, different jurisdictions have different frameworks and different approaches to data governance or AI governance uh, in uh, their uh, uh, domestic jurisdiction, because uh, we, uh, of course, recognize you know, in uh, different countries have different backgrounds and different, uh, uh, in, uh, different uh, uh, historical or uh, uh, social or economic uh, uh, conditions. So uh, we uh, 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 we uh, recognize uh, uh, we we have to. Uh, have uh, different uh, approaches, but those approaches uh, should be uh, as uh, uh, interoperable and uh, coherent uh, as possible, and that uh, uh, would uh, facilitate uh, the better flow uh, uh, of uh, data across borders and uh, uh, better uh, uh, deployment and uh, uh, use uh, of AI technology oh. uh, between uh, uh, countries. And uh, we also picked up internet governance policy as a whole, and the uh, countries discussed uh, how we could uh, 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 promote multi-stakeholder dialogue uh, in order to promote open and uh, free uh, uh, and unfragmented global internet. And that is why uh, we uh, jointly uh, 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 hosted a, a, a session on uh, internet governance uh, 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 on the very first day of this uh, uh, IGF. And mm -hmm. the whole uh, series of uh, uh, session at this uh, IGF discuss how to promote uh, internet governance uh, based on multi-stakeholder approach, which uh, we put highest uh, importance uh, uh, as uh, uh, government of Japan. And we are very happy to see uh, all of you are gathering together and discussing this important, very important topic uh, 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 all together. So thank you very much. That, this, this is just my introduction. And thank you very much uh, for this opportunity. Thank you very much, Ms. Saeed. Uh, and it, it's very interesting because you brought the issue not only of the centrality of data of free, the centrality of the flow of data between borders, but also um, it's the relationship of this with with emerging technologies and AI, etc. But the specific point on multi-stakeholderism uh, is uh, one thing that we're going to work uh, a lot in this panel, discussing the, also the role of civil society in these discussions. But um, before that. I would like to hear now God of Sharma. Um, he's going to talk a, a little bit about the main challenges that we have in the coordination between these two groups. Um, and also, how does he see the difference between the agendas of countries from the global south and the global north in this regard? So, God of, are you there? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, perfectly. Wonderful. Thank you, uh, Thank you for the opportunity. So I would put my remarks in my personal capacity uh, and uh, not like a, not from the German Development Corporation, uh, but 
uh, I work with the German Development Corporation on AI, uh, and in this sense, uh, we are also in an open sourcing environment of creation of data sets, and we are also trying to leverage uh, the, you know, supporting the data ecosystem in general. So my comments from Indian perspective, and then leading into the uh, highlighting the, you know, the G20 aspects of uh, how things are. Uh, I would just suggest that India has embraced technology and digitization, uh, and this has been an economic driver for India uh, to improve uh, lives of the citizens. However, the country, as it continues to grow and with uh, sort of involvement of digitization, digital payments, India being the heartland of uh, DPIs, digital public infrastructure now, uh, it is also ensuring that its digital strategies uh, and data governance are inclusive, are transparent, secure uh, and conducive to uh, the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, and in this sense, I think uh, the recently uh, uh, sort of passed bill or act, the Digital Personal Data Protection Bill has highlighted certain components, but it also highlights certain issues of how uh, Indian um, um, government mindset is also looking at uh, other aspects of data. You know, so I'll just highlight like two or three points. One of them is uh, processing of digital personal data within India uh, based on online or offline, uh, you know, is uh, is of cognizance and such processing uh, outside of India and services which also affects Indian citizens will be taken uh, with a lawful purpose. Uh, consent has also taken, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 sort of for lawful purposes of an individual, but it might be not required uh, based on certain uh, grounds of national security. So, I mean, that also leads into data collection, processing, and detention uh, on, on exclusionary basis on, on certain um, sectors. Uh, data fiduciaries and all good. So, I just wanted to highlight that this data protection bill has uh, sort of championed what uh, uh, next one year will actually showcase how uh, both public and private sectors will look at this uh, components of uh, data governance in general. What I'm coming down to uh, now is basically the aspects of uh, data governance uh, when it is looked at from a emerging tech perspective. Uh, basically, if you if you look at data governance, uh, it is developing agreements on filtering and curation of practices, uh, and basically connecting sources, toolers, and multiple entities involved in data. What what has been highlighted is that there is a need for uh, governance as such, which focuses on data stakeholders. Uh, interacting norms, values, etc., but also on governance structures that is operates over data sets. I mean, provides uh, you know data uh, efforts on data sourcings, on how data is accumulated, categorized, organized, and most importantly on data documentation. And, and I think these frameworks are uh, designed to enable values, and this will actually, from my perspective, lead into uh, interoperability or trans data transfers. Uh, and these uh, discussions are still being categorized in terms of uh, how this will happen across borders because of the sense of data subjects, uh, the sense of data creators, uh, the sense of uh, you know, data set distributors, and of course, the sense of uh, the data set users and also all citizens. So uh, I think I would rest my uh, initial comments that the G20's uh, uh, agenda item in approach of collaborative governance is great, but it does require some, you know, uh, initial uh, handholding with terms of uh, how norms get designed uh, and how oper operationalization of these definitions in different legal contexts uh, based on national sovereignty uh, are allowed for the development of uh, both locally relevant uh, supporting tools uh, uh, or to formalize relations between actors in different parts of the world. So I'll rest my case as that, but there is a definite need for the Global South, more greater participation, but also collaboration. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gaurav. Uh, found interesting that you brought the issues related to sovereignty is like uh, when we discuss, um, especially in the Global South, like how, um, how to some degree dependency on infrastructures and on, and and how our data is processed uh, by agents in other in other territories. Um, I mean, how this issue plays within our region. So now jumping to Alexandre Costa Barbosa, um, I think that now we could start talking a little bit more of like how social movements can benefit from this agenda, how they relate to this agenda, and also maybe how 
participation from the civil society can be enhanced. Uh, I think that we listen, especially Mr. Ida talking a lot about uh, multi stakeholderism, but do we have an effective participation? Um, how, how is your take on that? Thank you very much, Jose. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for inviting us, uh, the uh, Vice Minister and colleagues. Uh, I'd like to address some, some really quick, quick issues, and I think it's really important, not only in terms of uh, participation and representation and legitimacy of multi stakeholderism, but actually, uh, and the Vice Minister probably may be asking herself why there's even a homeless workers' movement and why a homeless workers' movement is working with technology. So I invite all of you, if, I, if you want to get know a bit more about that, our, our work will be uh, showcasing in the front uh, session at 3 p.m. Uh, but my take, it's mainly, uh, I think Guraj mentioned about the, clearly about the labor behind data production. I think it really, should be really taken into account. I don't know if most of you have heard about the micro workers, which are the, the ones who are basically labeling, cleaning data that are being used in, in those data sets, in those data uh, codes and so on. I think it's really important to be taken into account, even just having discussions. The Oxford Internet Institute, for instance, just launched uh, a policy brief last week, and they are really being, making clear how this discussion has been uh, missing. Uh, also, uh, we need a really special attention on the cloud economy as well, because there's something that we cannot do as a social movement, right? Since most of the data traffic goes through this uh, so-called gatekeepers. And, and I'd like to take the opportunity as well to, to raise the, the importance of, think of the data governance in the last mile, right? So multilateral organizations really should think of this multi-level approach. Uh, really have to be, co based on concrete experiences, like how data governance is really influenced in the last mile, right? And that's why we created ourselves a, a data governance section within the technology sector. And we have among our principles, basically, the use, access, and generation of data for the common good, ensuring privacy and prioritizing cooperative data governance models. So it's maybe something, lessons that can be learned from both directions, right? And just to conclude, I think what we should do is exactly this, like bridging uh, digital rights organizations with traditional social movements and be on the ground, like even in G20 negotiations in Brazil, we'll be there definitely claiming for our rights. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ali. And um, the issue, I think that when we talk about also imaging, we, we've talked a lot about data, not only the free flow of data, as I mentioned earlier, but also on data for training AI systems for working on them and how it is unavoidable, indispensable, and necessary that we talk about the laborers who are doing the back, the back, uh, the back work of all of this. So, and to some degree, I think that now um, how we include the issue of how we include workers, how we include um, issues related to the exercise of human rights with, with among these these different groups, I think is a thing that relate a lot to to what even Mr. Ida mentioned about the SDG, the Sustainable Development Goals, and I think that maybe Veronica Arroyo could talk a little bit about these issues. Uh, we have been discussing a lot here in the IGF on the environmental impacts of digital technologies, but also we've talked about, once again, labor on how different populations are, are um, experience uh, the data economy in very different manners. So, yeah, Veronica, uh, if, you're, if, if you could please uh, jump in. Yeah, sure. Um, thank you very much for the qu for, for the question, for the opportunity here, for the invitation, and, and hello to everyone uh, wherever you are at this point. Like when we talk about like data governance, one of the things that I I think immediately is that um, it really depends where you at. So I think uh, already uh, we've been here right now that there are differences among the different jurisdictions that we have. Some of them will have a very strong enforcement mechanisms for specific issues such as data privacy, for instance, but in some other cases will be, will be more flexible, right? And that happens because uh, I think that there are 
um, th that design on the data governance and how a, go a country addresses this depends heavily on the policies, on the priorities that this country has. And in other words, that those priorities drives like are the ones that decides like which regulation or which rule is stronger or weaker or it's completely absent. Um, and when we talk about those SDGs, uh, I would like to think more like how those SDGs, as we know, can drive that design of um, global or data governance tools. Because at the end of the day, those SDGs are, are a purpose that a bunch of countries and representatives have agreed on, and they are also a common language. That means that it's easier when you have those commonalities that we already heard like a few minutes ago, it's it's easier to, to develop further. And um, those SDGs can be at the core of, um, of any policy, of any development, because at, at the end, the data governance tool, like the regulation that we are fighting for or are writing are just tools on how to manage all the information ecosystem that we have in a country. So it's it's that's the that's the part where where I see like SDGs becoming like the central issue. And for, for instance, as you mentioned right, uh, just uh, seconds ago, like the climate action goals, one of the 17 goals of the, uh, the SDGs. Um, so for, for instance, taking that, if that's the priority right now, if we, we agree like the seven countries at the G, G7 or the 20 on the, on, the other, on, on the other meeting, agree that that's something that we want to foster, that we want to care. So then you will, you internally, like in your own framework, you see like, where do I need to make the tweaks? Where, which regulation needs to be updated? Like how we can make this conversation between my, my data governance inside my country to with another data governance design. So that helps to, to then at, at the end of the day, you know, um, have and meet those goals that we already said at that point. And focusing on the commonalities is one of the messages that I have here, because I've already tried to kind of experiment on how to work with commonalities. And there's a paper, um, my colleagues, Karen Hayes, Nicole Grobone, and Gustavo Ribeiro wrote, uh, and we published like some uh, weeks ago, that works on those commonalities in, in, in a very interesting way. We found commonalities between the between China, Europe, and the U.S. And based on those commonalities, we propose obviously uh, ideas and recommendations on how to foster or allow data transfers, which is a very huge topic and very difficult to answer in in a very straight way. Similar to what do we do and how do we do SDGs? At the end, the, the question I think, uh, or the answer, mainly the answer to this question is how we find those commonalities and SDGs are those commonalities for. Um, uh, to, to foster and to um, design uh, the future um, or the present uh, data governance structures um, that we have in, in our countries. Thanks, Vero. Um, I think you brought amazing points and I think that uh, it's, we like, we within the Global South probably are the ones, uh, we have differences in how our, we suffer the impacts of digital economy and uh, when you brought the issue of climate action and et cetera, how, uh, I mean, climate effects of, uh, that we are having by, at, at the moment, how this relates to, for instance, how popular, how local communities, how uh, indigenous communities in Latin America suffer with this issue, for instance, when we talk about mining and et cetera, and how these mining also relates to the, the digital economy as a whole. And well, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the G20 next year will be in Brazil. And I think that no one, uh, there's no one better maybe in this, in this table, in this room to talk about that than Luciano Maza, who is leading the Department of Science, Technology and Intellectual Property at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And well, I would like to hear from you, Luciano. Uh, how do you think that the, how the government, the Brazilian government, is seeing the next steps related to data governance? Um, how does it intend to promote this agenda? If it is a priority, if it's not, if it's not, what are the other priorities that it has for the discussions to come at the G20? So, please. Uh, thank you very much, Jose Renato. It's a pleasure to be here, uh, part of this panel. Uh, I think Mr. Ida gave us a, a good um, set the scene for, for our discussions. 
Mr. Does know is, is a reference in this in this era, not only for his work in G7 and, and G20, but also as head as chair of the CDEP committee in the OECD. And I think that that's important to 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 bear in mind because there is a, a certain co coherence in the approaches that been, that have been developed uh, in the work on, on on data on data flows on data governance uh, within the the, the OECD within the, the, the G7, and then how it was uh, debated and absorbed uh, in the G20. Uh, and as, as, as Yoshi uh, rightly pointed out, it was uh, brought to the fore in particular by, by the Japanese presidency. And it is articulated under this, mainly under this concept of data free flow uh, we trust. Uh, I think that the question we have is that there are different approaches to, to look into data. And of course, uh, data protection was, is one component of, of data governance. Uh, there are the elements, there are the dimensions. Uh, and I think we, within the framework of G20, there's a certain, let's say, my, my perception that you have a certain stabilization in conceptual terms on the discussion of, of data free flow with trust. Uh, we haven't discussed more directly this agenda in the last two presidencies, more directly, of course. This data governance is in every, uh, every issue of, 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 of the digital domain, so of course, in a way or another, we're touching on them. But I think neither uh, the Indonesian presidency or the, the, the Indian presidency uh, approached this, 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 uh, this subject area more directly. Uh, and I think there's a reason for this, uh, because of course, when, when we, we, we start a presidency, uh, every country tries to, to, to bring a perspective that makes sense for its own reality, let's say, and, and, and how it, re it, it responds uh, to more immediate concerns of, of the country, the issues that are more, are higher in the agenda at that moment, uh, not imply that other topics are not equally relevant, but in the specific context, maybe less, uh, prominent in the, from the perspective of the, of, of the government. Uh, and I think both the, the Indonesian presidency and the Indian presidency uh, dealt with this issue in, in different ways, but not directly. So data governance was not presented at one, uh, let's say, what you call priority issue in their presidency of the Digital Economy Working Group. Uh, the Indian presidency, of course, uh, discussed this in the context of the, of the DPIs. Obviously, DPI, one of the, the way uh, the discussion or, or was articulated during the Indian presidency, there's a big element about uh, uh, data sharing, of course, as one of the stacks of, the, of, of DPIs, but that's more in the internal dimension. Uh, there's an like external dimension, uh, as, as mentioned by Mr. Ida, on how you can uh, make sure that different frameworks on, on, on this area can be interoperable in a way or another. But I think what, one of the main reasons why uh, this was not discussed uh, more directly is that when we start this discussion on data governance in the G20, there was a, a way to try to balance a little bit uh, the debate on, on, on free flow of data and potential uh, concerns or constraints uh, in terms of a more uh, development-oriented perspective. And something that we felt during the debates of the Indian president, for instance, a lot of discussion and we're there finalizing the documents on an expression that has been uh, in the communiques of G20 that uh, every time we, we, we discuss uh, data free flow with trust, we also uh, ask for the inclusion of a reference in the importance of uh, the role of data for development. Uh, and I think that's, uh, the question is, it's, those are perhaps different approaches, they are complementary in a way, but perhaps uh, are not fully articulated in the G20 debate. And I think that's why, uh, from uh, a developing country perspective, uh, they may feel that the subject is not fully mature to uh, uh, an additional discussion from this perspective. Uh, in our case, although we recognize that the, the issue is, is, is crucial and so of utmost importance, uh, we, we identified and we, we, communicate, we indicated this to, to, to our colleagues in each 24 priority areas that are um, uh, universal and meaningful connectivity, artificial intelligence, uh, e-government, and also, uh, yes, information integrity, so sorry, thank you. And those are the four topics that we identified as being the, the main priorities uh, for Brazil at this point, because they, they, they let's say, they, they respond to concerns and to issues that are very much at the forefront of our discussion internally, and you think that they echo uh, uh, concerns that are uh, also in the, in the international agenda right now. Uh, 
but of course, the data governance issues will come up in different elements of the discussion. They always appear uh, in every single communique of G20, uh, display references and, 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 and debates on, on this topic. But as, as, as I said, is not, uh, we are not envisaging uh, a, let's say a full front discussion on this topic in our agenda right now. And uh, I think we can, of course, elaborate a little bit on, on, on this issue. And also, you, you, you refer to the topic of how uh, mood stakeholder participation can be, can be ensured in that process. We'll be happy to, to discuss this as well. Thank you. OK, thank you very much, Luciano. Well, I, I already have uh, some questions in my mind, but I, I would like to know first if there is anyone in the audience who would like to jump in and raise a question. Um, do you have anyone? Come on, guys, you can make it. Uh, we have some questions here in the chat. Maybe I'll have them, and then uh, some of you can also think of something. Um, so, uh, actually, first, before that, I think I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try again, once again to to share Median's video. Otherwise, she's gonna. I'm, I'll be in a bad situation. Yeah, yeah, she'll definitely be mad at me. Just one second, guys. Uh, okay, hope now it will work. Share sound. Okay, compartir. Okay. It works. Dear colleagues and participants, good afternoon. I'd like to begin by thanking all participants for their interest in joining on the challenges of data governance in the multilateral world. My name is Miriam Wimmer and I'm a commissioner at the Brazilian National Data Protection Authority and one of the organizers of this session. Our aim today is to address some of the challenges posed by data governance and explore the different approaches that have been proposed by multilateral organizations such as G7, G20, the UN and the OECD. In fact, over the past years, we have been observing lots of discussions and many different proposals manifested through declarations, roadmaps and agendas and based on complex concepts such as data free flow with trust. In this sense, one of the main challenges that faces, that faces us today is to understand how these different proposals interconnect with each other, in which aspects they complement each other and in which cases they create tensions or gaps. Another aspect of this debate is how to make sure that all relevant stakeholders participate in the discussions, understanding that when we discuss the flow of data across borders, we are not only debating the interests of companies or of nation states, but the rights of individuals. In this sense, the debate on data governance and international data transfers must necessarily take into account multiple perspectives based not only on the different approaches that countries may have towards data protection, but also on the different interests of the various stakeholders affected by this discussion. In fact, in Brazil, where we have a quite recent general data protection law, we are at this point in time discussing regulation on international data transfers and facing the challenges of making sure that the mechanisms that we establish are interoperable and allow for the protection of the fundamental right to data protection, regardless of where the data is actually located. I very much regret not being able to join you in person for this discussion, but would like to thank Mr. José Renato Laranjeira for conducting the debate in person. Thank you very much, and I look forward to hearing your comments. I wish you all a very productive session. Well, Miriam was part of my uh, master's examining committee, so she would never forgive me if I didn't share this, this video here with you guys. Um, well, so, the question that we have here is from Omar Farouk. He is a 17-year-old boy from Bangladesh, as he describes himself. And so first of all, it's really nice that the youth is participating. And I think that maybe this can be also a topic of discussion when we talk about multi-stakeholderism. And he asks, first, how can data governance frameworks be designed to protect the rights of children and young people, especially regarding their privacy and mental health? What are the specific challenges of data governance in the context of child rights and mental health in the global south? And how can we ensure that their voices are heard? So this relates a lot to multi stakeholderism. Um, well, who wants to jump in first before I start pointing fingers here? Who would do? 
Mr. Ida, Ale, Luciano. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the uh, uh, wisely pointed out uh, the uh, uh, we have uh, we see you know the. Uh, uh, as the uh, world is uh, digitalized and uh, 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 the more data are used uh, uh, for, for production or uh, education or many other uh, uh, sector uh, 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 activities, uh, we need to know how uh, we uh, better govern data. But uh, uh, it is uh, always a uh, challenge uh, uh, for, for policymakers to understand, you know, uh, domestically uh, we have uh, uh, different types of players and we need to, to make uh, everybody happy. But at the same time, uh, the digital uh, uh, economy is not closed uh, uh, economy, but uh, it's always open and go beyond the borders. So uh, we always need to, to collaborate uh, together with uh, 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 outside players. And that is what uh, uh, G7 and G20 and other international fora uh, is working for. And uh, uh, this is very important uh, uh, opportunity. And uh, uh, as uh, 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 I listened to uh, 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 Director uh, Matza, uh, uh, we are very happy to know uh, the uh, Brazilian uh, G20 presidency will be discussing uh, data governance and also uh, uh, information integrity, uh, which uh, 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 probably uh, 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 kind of uh, another formulation of cybersecurity, which uh, we are we used to 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 uh, use the wording, but uh, uh, I think uh, 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 the terminology uh, information integrity will be a very wise uh, approach to pick this up uh, because you know once people uh, talk talk about security, uh, this is uh, easily politicized, and uh, uh, I think uh, 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 this is uh, uh, this. Matters should be uh, discussed from uh, uh, the social and economic perspective rather than uh, a political perspective. So I, I, I uh, uh, very much look forward to the discussion next year and uh, uh, discussing data uh, governance is very important for, for all uh, uh, economic and social actors and uh, uh, it is very important to know how to uh, 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 better and wisely uh, use data uh, because data is uh, always the uh, uh, I don't know, uh, oil or engine or whatever, but uh, we need, uh, definitely need a better uh, use and a better flow of data across uh, society and the economy. Okay, Mr. Ida, well, uh, before uh, passing on to the others, uh, Juliana has a question over there. And okay, so please go ahead. Okay, thank you. I'm Juliana, technical advisor from the Brazilian Internet Steering Committee. Uh, and I'd like to ask, if do you think that the data and digital sovereignty debate may help to auxiliate the implementation of exception to free flow to free data flow requirements such as mentioned by Luciano for development uh, in these multilateral agreements or is the term still needs to be prof uh, profounded and needs more debate Thank you, Ju. And um, maybe also on, on this topic, I think. Oh, thank you very much. Um, well, okay. Let's give a room for your guests to answer it. Um, maybe, like, who wants to answer any of the questions? Gora, Veronica, if you guys are also interested in, in discussing any of them, please, please raise your hand. So, but Luciano, then please go ahead. And uh, uh, Luciano, maybe if you could also, since you're saying, maybe if you could also touch a little bit upon how, how, what do you see in this trend? Uh, you mentioned Indonesia and India. It was not, a, it was not a priority in their presidencies. Is what do you think that this means when we like considering that these two countries and now Brazil, all of them from the global south are not taking this. Uh, let's not say that they are not paying attention to it because, as you said, data governance is part of everything when we discuss this. But um, why is this not on the top list? So maybe you could highlight beyond the questions of... Uh, thanks, Renato. No, I think, of course, we have a limited time during the, the, the G20 presidencies. We're talking normally about uh, working year of, I don't know, eight, eight months sometimes. Uh, the digital agenda is, is, is huge. Uh, it's very hard to cover 
all topics uh, during, a, during a period of one presidency. So it's, it's accepted that it's important to give focus to certain, certain issues. Uh, and I think in this case, from a more, more pragmatic perspective, I think there's a huge development in the conceptual discussions on, on data free flow trust based on all this leadership Japan uh, has had and, and had in the past. Uh, so as I said, I think the issue is stabilized a little bit. Uh, I just mentioned, so I think understandably when, in, in every country we, we, we look to, to this reality from, from, uh, from a different angle. Uh, and I think it's, it's, it's understandable that what are, let's say, the, the more sensitive and pressing issues for, for Japan or for uh, Saudi Arabia won't necessarily be the same uh, as for India, uh, Indonesia or for, or for Brazil. So I, I think it's, 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 it's normal that we, we, we have this, uh, this, this situa these situations where uh, a relevant topic is not dealt with m in detail in every presence because not, that's not possible. That, will hap that, that happens also to other issues than not only to, to, to data governance. Uh, what I mentioned, I think that it relates a little bit to the question Juliana made is that there is, I, I won't say there's a tension, but there's an issue on how you, you can uh, incorporate into this discussion uh, a perspective, uh, a more development oriented perspective uh, and I think that relates a little bit to discussions on, 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 uh, on data or digital sovereignty uh, in the sense that I think there are a lot of questions that need answering. Uh, and I think particularly from the perspective of developing countries, uh, many countries, I'm not saying necessarily in the case of Brazil, but looking at the, the, the general landscape, don't necessarily have a, a, a full, fully matured set of policy and governance regimes internally. And so there is a concern also on how uh, you can uh, make sure that there is a, a certain margin of, of flexibility or, or leeway uh, to ensure that when you decide on the right policies for, for, for the country domestically, you don't face uh, constraints that may make it difficult to, to adopt those policies. Though I think that, I think part of the discussion uh, relates to the fact that it's, a, it's still evolving, a evolving uh, a landscape. Uh, I think in this field, something that I have to be aware of is that uh, there are agreements and trade, trade agreements that are, let's say, uh, developing the direction of incorporating digital elements. Uh, there are some few agreements that uh, call themselves digital agreements. And I think the question that one must, uh, should make is uh, to what extent the same principles and, and, and guidelines that normally are considered uh, in the trade, multilateral trade regime, for instance, can be fully replicated in the digital area. And I think that, I think there are different answers to, to that, but I think that uh, relates a lot to, to, to the, the issue. Thank you, Luciano. Um, Godov raised his hand at some point. Do you want to jump in, Godov? Yeah, I, I think, uh, uh, thanks. I mean, the, the question is that uh, the countries are still uh, uh, trying to, uh, you know, fine tune their values and definitions in terms of how data sovereignty would mean for them, right? And what exactly is an entailment of cross-border data transfer? what regulations and what laws it will be there. So one of the simpler approaches is basically on certain countries which share same democratic values and systems, there would be bilateral agreements of data sharing which can happen seamlessly uh, because on certain parameters which are standard, right? But with certain countries, it would be maybe on, there would be some conditional agreement for exchange. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I would just rest at that because I saw five minutes for the session. So I think data sovereignty is a little more typical in terms of uh, how uh, Global South is first trying to understand. And this is even more problematic when it comes to AI specific, I mean, large language models like chat GPT and things like that, which are crawling data. So it's very difficult for defining this in the digital emerging tech space. Thanks. Thanks, Gaurav. And inc uh, it's incredible that we took 55 minutes to talk about chat GPT. So. <laughs> uh, Vero, please. And by the way, we only have four more minutes. Uh, so if you could, we also need to listen to Ali. So maybe, okay, I'm seeing that we don't have, okay, we don't have a common agenda. We don't have a, a linear perspective. Every, like different regions have the different priorities. So maybe if you could also, um, yeah, you already talked a little bit about that, but if you could also touch on this point in your, in your response, that would be amazing. 
but yeah thanks yeah, yeah. It's, it's true that we don't have like the same agendas and there will be different different uh, kind of definitions and what we consider digital sovereignty depending on where we are but I really wanted to touch upon the first question of the, of the chat um, regarding because um, something that we, we're hearing right now is about uh, data transfers and data flow with trust. So focusing on the trust part, like trust is something that could be built. And one of the things how we build trust is with uh, reducing the information asymmetry that exists. And I think this is something that we all agree that we need information asymmetries. And, and if we talk about that, I think it is, that's very connected on, on the SDGs that I was mentioning before. Um, there is um, SDGs on education and on equal opportunities as well. So I think focusing on those specific things that we are already uh, agree on that will help at least in the case of children and young people to be more involved in the this, in these discussions, to be more um, capable, we have more skills to be there to produce and also um, be active. So that's important when you're building that trust. Because the trust is not just governments giving, saying, I will trust on the information that we are managing here, but also the, um, the, the individual having trust and providing trust. So it's it's a, like a bi bilateral thing happening. Um, that will be my last remark because I know we are we are not, we don't have enough time. Thanks, Vado. Thank you very much. Ale, let's start with this. You are a specialist in data, so in data digital sovereignty. No, I won't talk about that then. <laughs> uh, just really, really quick, thank you again for inviting us uh, to be, be here in this, in this really interesting panel. Uh, honestly, I, I think that if digital sovereignty really means, as Luciano stated, not balancing not only data-free flows, but also data for development and really contributing to the last mile, that's really useful, right? It's one of the most important powerful concept of this decade yeah, from a political science perspective, right? So yeah, if it's really contribute to the last mile development, yeah, I think it's, it's useful. Thanks, my friend. So uh, surprisingly, we are closing the session on time. We still had one minute. So um, I would really like to thank you all for being here. Unfortunately, like, um, I feel like we had so much to advance in this, like, uh, after doing this mapping of the discussion that we did and like to how to move forward. But um, I would say that if I would have one issue that I would like to have addressed for the future and maybe this is a me message especially for, for the government is how can we communicate, how can we enhance our communication, uh, the, the, the range of possibilities that we have to contribute to this agenda to also have some participation in identifying the main trends, the, the main issues that we, that we need to, do, to discuss in, this, in, in these topics. But um, I'm really happy that we had this conversation, so thank you all very much, Brazilian government, Japanese government, Homeless Workers Movement, GIZ, Citizen Lab, and the people who are representing this organization which are the ones who are here. So thank you very much and thank you also once again ANPD, the Brazilian Dish National Data Protection Authority for making this possible with LAPIN. And that's it, thank you very much.